Hi guys, welcome to TickBased. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest Windows 11 Insider preview build for the dev and also the beta channels because we have the same build for both Insider channels. I think you know what that means. That means that the beta channel is finally moving on to 24H2. But things are a bit confusing because the beta channel will also stay on 23H2 for a while before being automatically upgraded to 24H2. But in this video, of course, I'm going to explain to you how this is working and what Microsoft is doing. But in this video, we're talking about about the build 26120.3073. This is the same build for both dev and the beta channels of the Windows 11 Insider program. In this video, as always, we're going to talk about what is new, what has changed, and also what is fixed in this latest build. If you enjoy videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. So let's begin with the video. So starting today, Microsoft is beginning to offer the same dev channel updates based on Windows 11 24H2 to Windows Insiders in the beta channel. So of course, if you're in the beta channel, you should go into Windows Update and then check for updates and you should have 24H2 available. But these updates will be optional at first. So if you are in the beta channel today, you can upgrade when you are ready to do so. So later this year, Microsoft is setting that 24H2 will be automatically installed on the beta channel, but not now. And also until that happens, the beta channel will continue to receive both updates based on Windows 11 version 24H2 and version 23H2. Also, if you upgrade today to 24H2, you may lose some features because there are some features that Microsoft is only testing on the beta channel on 23H2. Also, if you are on the dev channel, you have now a window to switch from the dev to the beta channel. So if you go to Windows Insider Program and Settings, then select your Insider Program, you're going to notice that you can downgrade to the beta channel if you want at the moment. By the end of February, the dev channel will jump ahead to receiving updates with higher build numbers. And once this happens, the opportunity to switch between these channels will close. Also, when the dev channel jumps ahead, things might not be as stable as the dev channel is today as stated by Microsoft so of course choose your channel wisely or if you're like me testing all the channels of course you don't need to do that so these are basically the changes that Microsoft is doing the better channel will start to see 24h2 in Windows updates but will also continue to have updates for 23h2 and also the dev channel at the end of this month will move on to higher builds most likely with features that will be a part of the version 25h2 which we could see at the end of this year Year. So these are basically the first things that we need to know about this build. Now let's move on to some new features. First of all, we have some new AI features for Copilot Plus PCs. For example, find photos saved in the cloud with improved Windows search. Microsoft is basically allowing you to search directly in the cloud using Windows search. More info about this, of course, will be in the article below in the video description or on the official Microsoft blog post. Inside the settings app, Microsoft is starting to roll out the settings homepage for commercial customers on PCs managed by an IP administrator. This feature will show some existing cards relevant to enterprise managed PCs such as recommended settings and Bluetooth devices as well as two new enterprise specific device info and accessibility preferences cards. Also as discovered by Phantom of Earth on X.com, Microsoft is testing out four different icons for emojis inside the system tray. So I'm going to show you how all of them look. There are four of them. But of course you have to go into taskbar settings at first and make sure emoji and more is turned to always so you can see it in the system tray and you can of course test out the new icons and of course we're going to use vive tool to test out all the different icons and the command for this is vive tool slash enable slash ad 48504539 and then slash variant and we have as i've said four different variants let's go on and test out the first variant but the first variant is this one as you can see we have this icon now let's go and test out the second variant and we're going to have to restart the computer for that icon to be available after the restart we can see the second variant or the second icon in my opinion the first one i think is the best one this is kind of weird and it doesn't really match the Windows 11 design. And now we're going to move on to enable the third and the fourth variants. Then we're going to restart to show you all the other icons. And of course, make sure to check out Phantom of Earth on x.com slash Phantom of Earth for more hidden features like these ones in Windows 11. We have here variant three, which we're going to test out. This is the first variant, basically a combination between the second one and the addition of a plus button. And now let's also see the fourth one. So this is the fourth variant. As you can see, I don't really like this one either. Either. I personally like the first variant the best. So of course you can test out all these variants if you want on the latest dev or beta channel builds. Finally in this build we also have a new paint app update. First of all just go into the Microsoft store, go to downloads and make sure you click on get updates to get all the latest updates for the paint app as well. And when you open the new paint app you're going to notice that we have a new section here or a new button which is called copilot and if you expand it you're going to have these options here. Basically Microsoft is introducing this new copilot menu where you can access 
use all the intelligent features which help you complete your image generation and editing tasks faster. Also, co-creator is only available on Copilot Plus PCs, so that's why we cannot see it here. But I think this is a pretty interesting thing, and I think it's better to have all the AI features inside a single menu, not scatter around the top menu of Paint. This is pretty much all there is to it in terms of new features and things that Microsoft is testing out in this build. Now let's talk about a few fixes that Microsoft is providing for this build. Related to the taskbar and system tray, Microsoft fixed an issue which was causing the taskbar preview windows to not display sometimes when hovering over open apps in the taskbar. Related to the file explorer, Microsoft did some work to help address an issue where file explorer might hang when browsing a folder with lots of media in it. Fixed an issue where if you opened a file explorer window and minimized it, it might not be rendered correctly when you restored it. Also improved windows search. Fixed the issue where in some rare cases, searching an outlook while offline might result in some results not being found. Related to live captions, fix an issue where live captions might show an icon in the taskbar but the window wouldn't display on the screen after disconnecting a second monitor. Related to remote desktop, fix an issue which was causing remote desktop to show significant display slash rendering issues when connecting to certain computers. Related to the settings app, fix an issue which was causing settings to crash when interacting with the Bluetooth devices page sometimes. A general fix, Microsoft also fixed the issue causing a ZOX CZO E9001 error to occur when booting into Windows Recovery on ARM64 PCs. And we also have some other various fixes, for example, fix an issue where when using the GDI Plus to shrink an image, the colors may be wrong afterwards. Fix an issue could cause shutdown to be noticeably slower on certain devices when a controller was connected. Fix an underlying issue causing the Windows security pop-up when signing into certain Wi-Fi networks to not be interactable. This may have also impacted interacting with this pop-up for certain other options and settings. Fix an issue where the description for virtual NICs wasn't displayed correctly in ncpa.cpl and showed garbled characters. Microsoft also fixed a memory leak when predictive input ideas show. Related to HDR, the display of some games appears oversaturated. This occurs when you use auto HDR. This was also fixed. Also an error related to remote desktop gateway was fixed. You could get errors or couldn't sign when you connect to Windows 11 workstations. And also the code 10 error message this device cannot start for USB audio devices drivers was fixed. We also have a new known issue. Microsoft is investigating an issue causing unexpectedly high DCOM CPU usage for some insiders after opening the performance section of Task Manager. There's also a new known issue inside the settings section Power and Battery. The colors in the new battery icon aren't displayed correctly when you have your mode and personalization and colors set to certain options with custom. And also the home page of settings may crash. If you are impacted by this, you should still be able to open specific settings pages directly by searching from them from the taskbar. There are also some known issues related to Copilot Plus PCs and AI features, but you can check those out on the official Microsoft blog post. So this was the video for today. I hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future articles like this one. I was your man from TechBase. Until next time, have a nice day.